I feel like I'm the proudest dad in the world right now. <laughs> all the conversations after a game. I remember all that. Pushing you hard. And now look where you at. It all's paying off now. So you put the work in. Yeah. Proud of you. Definitely. Definitely. I'm Chop Robinson. I'm here today to talk about my dream mate. When Chop was born, big old head, no neck, broad shoulders. His dad gave him the nickname, poor Chop, but then he cut it down to Chop. <laughs> Chop started to get older and like started to walk. He was destroying everything, knocking over everything around the house. So I have nine siblings, six boys, four girls. My first memory of my dad is him bringing in groceries every Wednesday when he would get paid and we'll have snacks and stuff to eat. My dad works for WSSC, which is a water company. He gets inside the sewers and get his hands dirty. He sacrificed everything, you know, not only for me, but all my siblings and my mom. He showed up to work every single day, even when he was tired, sick. He was just giving everything he got for us and just providing for us. The whole 29 years, I probably took off less than a month. But I learned that from his grandfather, my dad. He was a hard worker. That grind, you know, just getting up four in the morning, go to work, come home. We looked up to my dad, so staying home, have a good work at it, hard working man. That's the way we wanted to be. He never complained. He never showed like any stress or anything like that. He just cared and loved us. When he turned six, I signed him up for youth football. And he was happy just wearing the helmet and his shoulder pads. You know, he was there every practice. He'll be there on the sideline screaming my name. He was my coach growing up. You know, he pushed me to be the best and separate myself from everybody else. And that stuck with me to this day. He liked contact, he was aggressive. But you know, being the coach's son, he always used, Dad, why are you always yelling at me? Because I'm like, I can see you're going to be great. So when I was seven years old, my oldest sister passed away from lupus. Watching that as a young kid and not really understanding took a toll on me. Honestly, I thought she just went to sleep. That's what my mom kept telling me. I guess it allowed child to realize that life is short. Like, you have to make the most of your time while you're alive. My dad just still kept going to work, try to provide for us, and try to keep us focused on everything that we was doing. I had to be the rock. You guys still got your lives to live. It made the family stronger and closer. First time I remember hearing about Chop, he was, you know, as a freshman. You can definitely tell certain athletes have qualities that other athletes don't. I knew he was in good hands with Coach Kelly, and I knew that outside of football, that he would make sure it would put him on the path and be successful. When he got to Crest Orchard, he started to stand up, best D lineman, took his team to the state championship, and that's when I started to think he could really make it, like he got a chance. Up, oh, good one. Up, oh, good two, one more. I met Chop his sophomore year. When you got a sophomore that's on varsity, there's something special about them. It meant a lot having my dad, you know, my high school coach, and then now having a trainer that invests in me. The draft would be on and I'd text him and he'd still be in high school like, hey, in a couple years, we're gonna be sitting down together for this and your name's gonna be called. I always made sure I seen my dad or my family in the stands before every game. Just looking at them and knowing they're the reason why I'm on the field right now. I remember a game, it was against Gaithersburg, and my dad just came from a work trip from Ocean City, which is like three hours away, so I, I didn't think about him being there. But then once the game started and I seen him walking, he really took the time to get here, so it meant everything to me. I probably never realized it affected him that way. I always look at it, I didn't want to fail as a father. I'm proud, I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of him, and the whole family's proud. When I was 16, I also lost my oldest brother, Arthur Johnson. But I do remember the funeral. It was just crazy walking in, and then seeing, seeing my brother in the casket. And just seeing my mom cry. My brother's crying. That was the first time I actually seen my dad cry. So just seeing how everybody was affected, especially my mom, my sister, and my siblings. I didn't really care about anything else besides them at the moment. My dad was also telling me just well, stay focused because I was already you know, going on the right path. Like, this is just something you could add to the fire to, to keep going, and that's what I was doing. When you support your kid, become a lifestyle. Same. You see kids who don't have a father. <laughs> so I didn't want to be that dad that wasn't dead, you know? 
So I made it my duty that I had to be there for my kids no matter what. He just kept me focused, made sure I was getting to school, getting to class, going to workouts. It just kept me pushing because I would always think about my siblings. I just know my brother and my sister would want the best for me to just keep me going through everything. I think the opportunity to go and play college football to set yourself up for the next 25, 30 years of your life is really what the end goal is. Going to college, I definitely wanted all my siblings and my dad be able to come to all my games. So I went up to Penn State. You know, once I got there, my D-line coach, he really showed me what hard work really is. I always used to tell him, like, to be the best, you have to do the extra work that your comp competition is not doing. His dad is the perfect dream mate for him because every day when he wakes up and sees his dad get up at 4 a.m. to go work eight to 10 hour shifts, it motivates him to want to go and work hard. One of their main reasons for Chop's success is his dad. My dad's still going to be my dream mate. He's still going to be the same guy he is, blowing my phone up, texting me, making sure I'm still working hard and giving everything I got. So I don't, I don't think he'll ever change. <sighs> Chop's dream mate is, um, to me, I'm just dad, but he see me as like a superhero. I'm amazed by that. <laughs> Time fly. Yeah, you about to get drafted. It just seems like a dream right now. Whichever team that Chops get drafted to, they are getting a good one. All I can say is just watch out. Chop is coming. He's going to try to change the world.